What? <laughs> what? Crack. I hate it when movies do this, dude. This is true craftsmanship and true art right here. Oh, oh my, my god, dude. I can tell you exactly how they did this. Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Stick around to the end of the episode to figure out how you can get 15% off your first order. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artists React. Now you might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, a new episode? You guys are sitting right next to each other in this quarantine? Ha, this is a trick of perspective. We are in fact quite distant from each other and we will be giving you an episode here, socially distanced at the Corridor Digital Studios. We're all working from home these days, but we had to come back in order to film this one thing. We said quite distance, but how distance, Nico? How distance are we? How distance exactly? Don't let him breathe on that. Come so a little further than about six feet. There we have it. So, yeah, Don't get that near me. <laughs> it runs at about seven and a half. Anyways, we got a lot of great clips for you guys today. We got some good stuff. We got some bad stuff. We got everything in between. It's gonna be good. Let's break it down and tell you guys how they made the magic and how they maybe have made the magic even better. This just popped up online today, I think. What is this? <laughs> so this is the movie Splash, starring Tom Hanks. It came out, I don't know, 50 years ago? Uh, <laughs> it's currently up on Disney+, Plus, but because that's a family-friendly network, they actually had to track in some CG hair over her, her butt as she goes running off into the water. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh, goodness. That is rough. And it kind of just makes everyone <laughs> ask why. I can tell you exactly how they did this. So that is the clone tool, probably in After Effects. Oh boy. They've cloned one spot of her hair, literally over and over, so that as her hair rocks, all the hair rocks on her butt the same way. Straight up the video clone tool. Oh boy. <laughs> and that's just a flat 2D card as she like dives in. This, seeing this on Twitter today made me realize I have no idea what the original shot was. Maybe we saw a little bit more. The hair bikini looks real. Like that definitely, that's definitely practical. I can see him being like, ooh, when she dies into the water and back in the day, they're just like, whatever, release it. But it would have been so much easier for Disney just to fix that little bit with the clone tool rather than cloning a giant fur pelt over her entire keister. The problem with this is that it comes down to the effect is just very obvious. Yeah. And the clip has gone viral because it's obvious and has drawn everyone's attention. And now it's become a greater problem than they initially bargained for. But that's because that's how these things work. Woo! A start is part five. Oh, the, I, I have yet to watch this. Same. I have yet to actually watch this. I've been meaning to. A start <laughs> is part five is finally up. The guy finally got his YouTube channel back and under control, which is great because it was lost for a while. Hey, so, guess what? It still looks excellent. It's so beautiful, <laughs> man. The crazy thing about Astartes is it's basically one dude. I mean, there's a couple other guys that like helped out here and there with some things, but this is a testament to knowing your workflow and knowing how to like solve problems in an efficient way. Dude, the surface imperfections on the shoulder. Mm. Mm. So nice. Oh, that surface. Yeah, that displacement map. Yeah, it's incredible. Ooh. Do you think that's a displacement map or an actual like model? Definitely displacement map. Displacement maps are super, super cool. Because displacement maps, what they basically let you do is they let you take a texture and they let you deform something like, geometrically based on that texture. It's basically based off of like a luminance value. So the darker something is, the more sunken into the object it goes. And the brighter the pixel, the more away from the object it goes. Ren, you made a really cool Lego brick. <laughs> yes. Right, tell me about your Lego brick. You're using just displacement maps, right? Yeah, so like just using a displacement map, you can turn just a box model, like literally just six polygons, into like a highly detailed Lego brick because you can actually have like the little circles go up, and then if you're to flip the whole cube over, you have like the whole inset cube going in, and you actually make a whole Lego brick. Because simulating all of that, all of that geometry would have just broken the system, right? Yeah, because we had to simulate like literally thousands of Lego bricks falling down. So simulating a cube is easy, but simulating a cube with pegs on the top and hollow things on the bottom, that's hard. Exactly. The computer thinks it's a cube, but we think it's a Lego brick thanks to the displacement map. It's a way to get tons of extra detail without having to like overtax your system. Dude, like, look, I, at this, look at this modeling. And I thought that he put helmets on these guys just to be like, you know what, I'm not the best at you know facial animation, <laughs> so I'll just rock with some helmets and some armor, but no, he just took his helmet off, guys. Is there any motion capture in this? I guess that's I my question. I don't think so. I think this is all, it's all hand animated. keyframed. I think. I think. 
So when you're animating like an actual fully CG character, there's so many different things you have to like keyframe over the time, like every joint, every, the position of every arm. Everything has to be like intentionally placed in order to create the motion. That's why people use motion capture suits or motion capture studios to streamline all of that data so that I can like do this and then it's captured. Obviously there's some work going into translating and converting that stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody helped out and maybe gave him some base animations. But even still, like, there's so many specific things that you can't really do with motion capture that he has here. Like mm -hmm. very yeah. specific timed animations. The finger twitch there, like as the guy's like going into yeah. the ball, for example. Yeah. One of the crazy things about this being animated is the the armor. You need to make sure that like as things move that they don't clip. And like, you know, you'll have rigged bodies that will deform, you know, basically they're skinned onto a bone system, but with armor, you need to have things that stay solid, and they all need to like work together and move correctly and overlap with each other. And you can always tell a good animator because they keep inertia and momentum into account. Like, let's yeah. say I have a character, I wanted them to punch, and like, you know, okay, so they're here and they go here, right? What's so hard about that animation? In real life, you have to accelerate and then you have to decelerate, and you know, it throws your body into it and your head, you know, gets pulled chin first and then your forehead follows afterwards. And all these weird little rules about how things move apply to animation and you just have to have broken down the universe effectively to understand all these little tricks. It's one of those things where it's like an animator who's done a lot of animating will walk around and be like, oh, I can see how that thing swings a little bit differently because that thing moved and the way that person moved caused this little thing to move differently over there. It's one of those weird little curses you have to live with. I don't know about you guys, but I walk around looking at things and be like, Okay, so if I were to replicate this material, I would need a bump map here. Dude, I do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I do the same yeah. thing. I'm like, huh, like, <laughs> interesting. Like, you can do that with a noise map. You can stretch it on the Y axis a little bit. And, like, I totally do the same. Like, ah, oh, I want to recreate this texture just on a walk. And Kim's like, hey, hey, pay attention. What? I'm so sorry. I was just staring at the ground. <laughs>
dude. Yeah, and he, him like hanging on to that, that turret and getting scraped against the rock. Oh. And he's just like, oh, and it's getting closer and closer. Like, dude, that's so intense compared to just CG world. And you're like, yeah, it doesn't matter. I just remembered, one of you guys left a comment for this very next scene. If you guys have a scene you'd like us to react to, then leave a comment and we'll react to it in the very next episode. Spy Kids, dude! Spy, Spy Kids. Kids 3D! This is back before like 3D movies and theaters were commonplace. Raul Rodriguez, just screw it. <laughs> it's a kids movie. We'll just get her done. This guy's freaking desk? That's his <laughs> desk? <laughs> I hate it when movies do this, dude. They do that freaking janky, super gimmicky 3D move. With they no did that in Jaws 3D as well. So I guess this whole movie is based on the gimmick of 3D, which is why they have things like sparks flying to camera, because it feels like it's actually coming through the movie screen and hitting you in the face. I mean, Whereas most commonly over the last decade or so, 3D movies have all been about extending the set behind the screen and uh, giving depth. What? <laughs> what? Crack. What is this, dude? Don't why we is, know why is Cheech or whatever his name is in this? Danny Trejo, Uncle. machete. Machete. See <laughs> <laughs> machete flying in on a pig. Bill Paxton, R.I.P. This you know, is like the equivalent of an Adam Sandler movie, but for Robert Rodriguez, where he gets all his friends together and they just goof around. But you know what? The fact that it's a kids movie means it's like pretty chill. Like they're clearly on a green screen the whole time. Wait, are those CG glasses? Because they weren't wearing them a moment ago. Oh, oh there's a, a cut. cut right there. So CG glasses there. Boop. <laughs> there's nice. a cut. Nice. Okay, so, they... so it's just a jump cut. Okay. So, okay, this is a justified 3D shot, in my opinion. <laughs> That's justified. Those perfectly glossy metallic robots. I know. This is basically Pacific Rim now at this point. Can you forgive yourself? It's never too late, Sebastian. Oh, that's great. The biggest <laughs> that's great. switch! Oh, I love it's it. It's a light switch! I love it. <laughs> Rudy, get out of there! <laughs> off means yeah. all the pieces fall off. <laughs> so, a huge thing for my inspiration when I'm jumping into, say, like a visual effects shot or I'm trying to get creative and write something awesome, the very first thing I'll do is pop in some earbuds and listen to some music. And that's why. Today's sponsor, Raycon, is a perfect fit. They got these awesome everyday E25 earbuds. These are about half the price of any other wireless earbuds. The quality is just incredible, if not better. You got a bunch of awesome colors, nice design. You got six hours of battery life, and they're you know, they got a real nice, cozy fit. They just fit right in your ear. So if you guys are like myself and you need to listen to music to get inspired, the Raycon everyday E25 earbuds are a great way to do that. And if you guys are looking for a pair for yourselves, head to buyraycon.com slash corridor crew or click the link in the description to find out how you can get 15% off your first Raycon order. Thanks for watching everybody. We've officially ran out of footage, so we've had to start recording new episodes here. We're doing it as safe as we can, and we hope you're staying safe as well. But we will still be here every Saturday to entertain you. Let me see your quarantine haircuts. Not bad. Ren's, Ren's looking kind of normal with a little bit of a frill. That's pretty, <laughs> that's some Johnny Bravo. Yeah, can I, let's see if I can stick my hair out and like. Dude, that's oh like a God. narwhal, dude. A narwhal, a narwhal? <laughs> Anyways, please consider subscribing if you have not already. I look forward to hanging out with you guys in the next one.